Hello everybody and welcome back. I am Carex and we're going to be continuing with this tutorial for complete beginners for Crusader Kings 3. We are playing as Count Bosin here of the Bosinid dynasty. And our dynasty is actually, you know, we haven't clicked on this banner to actually see our full family tree, but you can come in here, click on open dynasty tree. There's not much. There's not much of our dynasty here. Um, if we go look at our father, Count Bozo here, um, we have uh, we had a, we had a brother who's dead, but he had a son. We have a, we have a queen actually, who's the uh, queen to the king of Lotharingia, which is kind of interesting. But we could see even one of our daughters has has died here, and we have a couple daughters, and we have a son, and so on and so forth. Presumably, actually, the one of the daughters has had a lot of different kids that uh, are of a different house, and and so on and so forth. So. Um, but that's something kind of cool to do. So that's who we're playing as, right? That's the, the, the legacy of that dynasty is really what sort of ties into um, our influence and our ability to uh, say that we've succeeded or failed, I guess, right? We need to keep that legacy going uh, to the next generation so that we can take over and we can continue. If for some reason we never had an heir, we didn't have anyone that could take over this house, then essentially the game would be over. That would be the game over state, right? But but for the most part, this is a sandbox game, right? About exploring the world and carving out an uh, an alternate history, right? Spending four to 600 in-game years to carve out uh, a different world, right? A unique world. So it is a sandbox game in that sense. But uh, what we've we done, we've talked about our character. We've talked about some of the characters in sort of in our sphere, like our son, our wife, ourself. Um, we don't have any subjects or anything like that. Actually, we don't know that for sure, but but it makes sense that we just have these two little bits here. We're just the Count of Provence. So we're not a Duke, so we're not going to have anybody really under us much. Um, we have these issues up here that says mostly we just have a bunch of family members that we can marry, and we're definitely going to want to take that. It says we actually have wars that we can declare. So we have casus bellies. We have causes for war, reasons to go to war that our people and our court and uh, even around the world, people recognize these as, as valid reasons to go to war. In fact, one of them against, is against King Charles II. Uh, and, and it's like, what is this all about? You know what I mean? So we can investigate why we can go to war with these people, what the Casas Bellies are, what the claims are that we have, um, that our family has in order to, to do that. Um, although, and then uh, I think we're just going to actually talk about these different tabs over here. So, so we've talked a little bit about the map modes and pausing and not pausing and and a little bit about our character over here and stuff like that. And we know that there's these currencies up here, but we don't really know prestige, what is it good for, how do we get it, stuff like that. You know, you can hover over these things to kind of understand why at least we do have a positive income for prestige, right? We have a positive income for money and all these things. And, and it's good, right? It's good to see that these numbers are going up because they certainly can be going down as well. There's a situation where they can just be going down. And in this case, they're all on the up and up. That's good. Uh, we have these different tabs over here that basically break down our country and the management of our country. And for the most part, we'll reference these things as there's context. But I think there's a couple of things in here that we're going to want to definitely just take a quick look at as you start the game just to get a sense of, okay. So if we go to our realm tab here, we have the three different bits. We have our vassals, we have our succession, and we have our domains. So our domain are like our holdings, like like what we directly control, right? Oh, we control the, the, the castle here in Provence, the main castle, and we control the castle over here in this county as well. So we have the control over these two counties, the county of Provence and the county of, of this place here. So actually within these counties, we can see that there's actually like some cities in here. There's some other castles in here. There's a church in here and so on and so forth, right? So there's other people. So there are actually vassals. These aren't particularly important people. They're just like mayors and bishops and stuff. It's like, who cares about them, right? They don't really like rule the land. But they do, or they are at least in charge of some of these different holdings here. And uh, presumably they pay us taxes and, and contribute a small amount of levies, very small amount of levies, and so on and so forth. So we have a few vassals. They don't, they, they're relatively happy with us. We actually haven't talked about sort of diplomacy in terms of how people like or dislike you, right? When we click on our character here, we can see her wife is plus 39. I apologize. Last episode, I didn't explain that. I might have said that she likes us. I actually, I don't even know if I did say that she likes us, but our wife likes us more than more than not, right? It's a positive number here. So the scale here is between minus 100 and plus 100. So zero being kind of a neutral attitude. 
So in this case, there's, you know, it's a plus 39. There's reasons for that. She's her spouse. There's a general, she tends to like, you know, people tend to like the person that they're married to just by proximity and default and so on and so forth. And then the personal, our personal diplomacy is tying into giving us a better relationship there. Our son likes us probably because he's the heir. You know, he's, we're his father. We he just appreciates us for that, but he's probably happy by the fact that he's actually the one that's in line to inherit everything. So he probably likes that just as a general thing. Of course, our wife's not going to like us as much when we uh, divorce her here in a second because that is something that we have asked the Pope to do so that we can get a young wife and start pumping out some more kids uh, because we might need those kids for various different reasons and things. So the realm, for the most part, this just gives us a sense of what do we have control over? Um, what are our vassals? I like to look at this tab because if we have some of these guys and they're angry with us, that's something that we might need to deal with. And some of these guys might actually turn angry with us based on uh, another tab, another sort of aspect of our management that we need to do here and there's some different things we don't have context for some of this stuff but but this is basically a realm right the actual land that we have and the people that control it that are under us and so on and so forth and how they feel about us and what they're contributing to the overall cause of the higher the higher office which is in our case the county is our highest office that we control these are the people below us so we could go to our military thing we could see oh we got 360 levies these are the people that if we go to if we will have 360 people basically with sharp sticks that we can give to the different people that will rise up to fight in our wars and stuff like that. We have five knights. These are incredibly uh, powerful characters, at least when they have a high prowess. Ten is kind of like I'd say an average number. So for the most part, the fact that our knights are actually relatively lower prowess is not good. I think we're actually going to force our son to actually be on the battlefield. Let's make our son a soldier. He's one of our best knights. Uh, he's not particularly amazing, but if he dies on the battlefield, that could potentially be a, a good thing. Um, our son doesn't actually have any kids. Um, right now, our second in line, like if we were to click on the county of Provence, the second in line is our grandkids. But if we were to have another son, they would be, uh, most likely they would jump ahead here because we have a male uh, male preference, right? So it's going to look for male options rather than going to uh, our daughters here. A little bit unfortunate. If our grandkids didn't exist, it would go to our, our daughters, though. So yeah, I think we want our grandkids to uh, to stay as knights. I think there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so on and so forth. It looks like we have a guest here. This guy is potentially could join up, but right now he's just a guest. Now we could recruit him. That's going to cost a certain amount of money. We only have twenty nine buck uh, ducats, buckets, ducats. We do not have buckets of ducats right now, so we got to be cautious with our money. I don't know if we want to pay for this guy to join. Seven's not good. I know it looks good in, in the in the context here of 10 being the highest, but you can get champions that are 20, 30, 40, 50 in, in strength. I mean, this is, of course, 50 is incredible. Like, that's absolutely insane. A 10 is, is like kind of like, ideally, you'd have everybody above 10, honestly. Uh, your champions are incredibly influential in your ability to win battles and, uh, and, and sort of, uh, yeah. And then if you can win battles, you can win the war, right? We can actually spend prestige to invite knights. And the cool thing is this event, this takes us down to our decision tab here. Our decision tab. So we're skipping a little bit, but there's a contextual button here to invite knights that brings up the decision that we can invite knights. Every 10 years, we can do this. We can spend 150 prestige. Oh, there's prestige. So we found a way to spend it. We have 450 right now. Spend a little bit of, we don't know what else we can do with that prestige, but we can get at least three able-bodied men with 12 prowess or more will arrive as guests in the court. 12 or more, holy cow, that's better than our best knights. So we get three knights to join our court that are better than our best knights. So it absolutely makes sense that we're going to want to, uh, we're going to want to do that. We're going to want to do that. Let's go back to our military tab. So that's basically all there is to it. If we had a good economy and we had a lot of money, we could create men-at-arms. Men-at-arms are like a standing army, right? The levies, I'm not trying to teach all this stuff because this stuff will come up in time. As we have money, it's like, hey, what do we do with our money? Right now, we don't really have any money. So we can't afford these guys. But essentially, this is the difference between a professional army that costs a lot of money and the levies, which are basically kind of just like free grunts, you know what I mean, that you can just... You pull from the villages, right? You just draft them from the villages and you send them to the front line. That's these people. They're not particularly very good warriors, but they're uh, they're cheap. So we're going to be relying on, on levies for now. The next 
tab. And again, I'm not trying to teach all this stuff. I'm just trying to like, I'm trying to hit the things that we want to do before we unpause the game. We do want to manage this stuff and set ourselves up for success before we unpause the game. There's things we need to check on when we start the game. And, and, and our court is our council. Sorry. Our council is probably one of the most important things to take a look at here. And essentially our council is broken up into our different counselors, right? We have our bishop, and he's got a certain amount of learning. 10 is being an average. It's like, okay, it's not bad. It's not good, so on and so forth. He's doing a certain job over here. He's working on religious relations. Sounds sounds good. Uh, most of these counselors can do three different things, right? And some of them are grayed out because they might we might not have the context for uh, for doing these different tasks. Like right now, there's nothing, there's no faith to convert. Our, our country is completely religiously unified. In the Catholic ways, there's no religious, there's there's no religious strife here. If there was religious strife, or if we took over land, like let's say from the Sunni nations or the Islamic nations, then we could actually have this guy go in and try to convert that land. But for now, uh, everything's fine. So so that's grayed out just to let us know. We we really can't do that. So, but he could do other things. He can fabricate claims, so he can create causes bellies, causes for war against other uh, neighbors and stuff like that. If we need to, he can also. Um, He's just sort of uh, building relations uh, with and, and increasing our general piety and stuff like that. We know we're spending about half of our piety right now to get the divorce. So the fact is, the fact that he's building up some more piety could be a really good thing. He's not doing a great job at it, but it is he's doing the best he can with the 10. So then we have the steward, and there this person is helping us with administrative matters. He's Right now, it seems like he's collecting taxes. Makes sense. So he's boosting our ability to make money. This person is our spy master. They're disrupting a scheme, so they're playing defensively. They're defending us against hostile schemes. But if we wanted to do a hostile scheme of our own, he would contribute to the aggression, the hostile scheme power, if we wanted to put him on support schemes. So he can either play defensively or offensively in terms of his what he's focused on. He can also go out and find secrets, and we could use these secrets to get hooks on people, blackmail people, and, and some other sneaky things. We have a marshal over here. He, right now he's organizing levies so that we can get a larger army, but he could be training commanders and improving the effectiveness of our knights and generals and stuff like that. And then we have our chancellor who is our, like our diplomat. Right now our diplomat is focused on foreign affairs, right? Making sure that all these sort of other powers and stuff like that, and even these larger powers like France and Lotharingia, these larger kingdoms are happy with us and not seeing us as a as some of that they want to conquer or work against, right? Because these are we have a lot of very powerful people around us. So he's going to make sure that they like us. That's a good thing. He could instead work on internal affairs, internal politics, and make sure that our subjects within our country like us more. But right now we kind of determine that they're kind of irrelevant, they're kind of weak, and they already like us. So the fact he's working on foreign affairs, I think that's a good idea. The stewardship could actually focus on development, do some other things. We'll talk about some of this stuff as we go, right? As we go. Actually, interestingly enough, he can promote culture. So right now, culture in the county is Provence. The county changes culture to French. We are, we are a French culture. However, our son is also French. So we're French culture. Hmm. It's kind of interesting. We could become Aquitaine. We could embrace the local culture of the local people and just embrace that and actually decide to sort of uh, sort of go this way and try to gain more influence over this area. Or we could stay French. Or we could say a lot of this is actually being ruled by French leadership, even if the people here, the citizenry here, is actually not a French culture, not, a, not directly French culture. So it's kind of interesting. We could have him change this province to French, or we could maybe embrace the, the culture of the people here. And just be like, hey, that's a good idea. Right now, he's probably not giving us. It might tell us how much he's actually helping us here. Huge taxes. Is that? It doesn't seem like this guy's really doing much. He could actually instead be working on developing, right, the the capital here. That could be good because you know, a more developed capital just increases the general. It's like a long term investment, right? So we're gonna actually have this guy developing capital. But more importantly, these guys, their skills, we can switch these people out. We're not forced to have. Uh, this guy here, Angel Bert, as our stewardship. In fact, a 10 is not that good. A 10 is not that good. If we can get like a 20, right? If we can get people that are better at these jobs, they'll have they'll have less negative side effects. They'll do a better job at their job. And I mean, some of these guys are, I mean, this guy's absolutely terrible. This guy's a three di diplomat 
This guy's got no diplomatic skill, whatever. We could have her grandson in here giving us a 15. Seems like a good idea to me. Let's have her grandson do this. Booyah. So her grandson now has a higher diplomacy. And the other guy's going to be pissed because we fired him. That's true. But it is what it is. This guy's a zero down here. Holy cow. How did he become a zero? Who do we have that we could be better? Here's a nine. That's our grandson. That's the one that's our chancellor right now. Our other grandson, that's that man. Nine is not good. Nine is not good. Do we have any good stewards? So basically what I'm doing is I click on this button to switch them, appoint a new steward, and then we can just order by what matters is the steward skill. That's what matters. This guy's the best that we have there. We cannot change the, uh, the bishopric. That is determined by Rome. Rome decides who's going to be our bishop, essentially. Um, so we don't get to pick that. So he is what he is. He's average. It's, it is what it is. He likes us too. That's good. You want your bishop, you want the church to support you. And if this guy likes us, then the church, essentially, he's like the, our local representative that communicates with Rome. And he's he's got a good opinion of us. So he's going to tell the Pope that we're we're all good to go there. And and we're going to be able to get the benefits of the, of the church in that case. Our wife, we can have her assist us. But the thing is, we're about to divorce our wife. So we'll just kind of leave her, leave her there for a second. Um... But yeah, I'd really like to get a better marshal because this guy's not good, and I don't even really think a 10 or a 9 is very good. I'd like to get a better steward because a 10 is not that great. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a sneaky thing. We're going to go down, we're going to take a pause here, right? This is our this is our court. Take a pause, go down to the, or sorry, the, this is our council. We're going to go down to our court, and these are the people that we have sort of direct influence amongst. These are the people we can marry off. These are the people that sort of are within our actual court. They, they live within our castle, and, and they're sort of just our family members and our just general sort of stewards and, and, and whatever. So what we could do actually is we can grab some of these people and some of these people might be our granddaughters and we do need people that are adults and not children. So here's a lowborn. Here's a lowborn in our court. She just kind of hangs out there and maybe she has some tasks or jobs or whatever. We can actually go find her a husband. Okay, and there's 192 people that would marry her. But what I need to do is I need to find who's willing to marry her matrilineally. Because if we can get her a matrilineal marriage, what she'll do is she will uh, bring in someone into our into our court. She will recruit the person. If she's matri if she's patrilineally married, she's going to be sent away, right? If we marry her to uh, someone in the French court, she's going to be sent to the French court, and she's just going to go live a happy life over there. But what we're going to try to do is we're going to matrilineally marry her. That means that whoever she's married to is going to be brought to our court. So we can recruit someone maybe of a higher martial skill. Like this guy's an 18. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. We could go find someone of a higher stewardship skill. This guy's an 18 too. So these are characters that we might want to grab here. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to see if we go to prowess here. This guy's also got a really high prowess. So by recruiting this guy, he's a knight that is 20 prowess. He is a legendary blade master, high martial skill. He's also a forest fighter. He's a lowborn, so he doesn't mind marrying matrilineally to this lady. That is a boom, boom, boom right there. Like, there we go. We're going to marry these two off. Perfect. So they're going to get married. He's going to be. He's going to join the court. Once he joins the court, we're going to make him a marshal. That's a little sneaky little tip. That's how you get a better council. As you take your low, you get just take random people, uh, adult women, um, essentially, and you marry them off to people who might have better sort of skills. Like this guy's ugly. Um, however, that doesn't matter because these are two lowborn people. Their children will not be relevant. Um, sorry to say for them, but we will be a little, be able to at least recruit. I'm actually going to go to prowess here. And I'm going to see, do any of these guys have a high prowess? No. Neither of them are a fighter. This guy's got a better sort of general secondary skills and stuff, but... The hideous guy, you know what, what the heck? Who doesn't like it? He's lustful too, that could cause a problem. Actually, him being lustful could cause a problem. Let's hire this guy out, and he'll be our steward. So this is going to be an 18 marshal and an 18 steward. That is going to radically increase our council's strength by putting an 18 here and an 18 here. That's going to be fantastic. They're going to be better at developing the country. They're going to be better at, at organizing the levies and, and raising taxes and stuff like that. It says here that we can recruit a, a court physician. Now, it's very expensive to do that. One thing you can do to do is you can just go look for someone that is... Um, has a good uh, learning skill 
and you can ask them to be appointed as a court physician. I think right now we're going to hang out a little bit because because it's 10 gold and again. We don't have a lot of gold right now. It is important to have a court physician. If we actually click this button here, it goes to the decision tab. It says search for a physician. If we click this, the physicians will find, I, I promise, will be much more expensive than just grabbing someone from our own court. However, what we could do is we could go look for another lady um, in our court, potentially. This is actually a daughter of ours. So we could maybe go find someone of a high learning skill, bring him into the court, and he could actually uh, serve as our physician. He's lustful. He's a 21 learned person now. Let's bring him in. But see, this is our daughter. I mean, realistically, nah, I, realistically what we could do is instead we could go look for inheritable traits. This guy's a genius over here. So we could have genius. Holy cow, he's a 21. This guy's a genius too. Yeah, let's have her marry the genius. She's going to lose a little prestige because she's a little bit of a higher born than this low born. She has the delicate thing. That's not particularly amazing. Um, because our our kids could be delicate. The kids between these two could be delicate. But but quite honestly, if she has children under the matrilineal marriage, they will be of our dynasty. So they will be able to, if they're geniuses, they'll be able to go out and propagate the world and, and hopefully do some good things. We're going to bring him in. That doesn't really make him a... Uh, that doesn't bring him in as a, as a physician. Now, the thing is, um, we could go look for... Uh, some rules could be occupied independent, like male or female. In the case of the physician, I believe you can have a female physician. No penalty with that. So we could actually, instead, what we could do is we could go look for a female of, of high learning skill. Doesn't need to have a trait, necessarily. She's a hemophiliac, which is uh, not great. Callous and arbitrary and content. Generous, just, craven, hmm. Temperate, fickle, trusting. Just kind of wondering if there's anything here that kind of makes sense for a physician. She's a lunatic. I don't know if we want our, I don't know if we want our um, physician to be a lunatic. Hemophilia kind of worries me a little bit because she might not last as long. She might, she might not survive very long. Let's bring this person in. Oh, she's a lunatic too. The heck. Everybody's a lunatic. Fine, we'll bring in the hemophiliac. She's a lunatic. Oh, sorry. No, he's a lunatic. She's not a lunatic. He's a lunatic. Got that backwards. He's the one. Uh, so we don't have to worry about her at all. We're going to bring her in. So we're marrying off. Uh, the funny thing is we've kind of realized by looking at the council, we had a context to say, hey, we'd like a better steward. We'd like a better marshal. This guy's marshal skill is just absolutely horrendous, right? So we'd like to improve these people. That brings us to our court so that we could find people at our court. That ties into the fact that this was telling us that, hey, you have family members that can be married off. This guy's 17 years old. We could just look for inheritable traits, right? One of the things you might want to do is you might just kind of want to have, uh, you know, oh, 21 there. Hmm. High diplomacy skill. I think oh, a genius down here. This is interesting. I mean, these might be, I, I think we're to hold off on marrying off our family members until we unpause a little bit and get all this other thing situated. But we are going to want in, to do it and do that. But I think we're going to marry ourselves. We're going to try to pick someone for ourselves and then marry our grandkids off. So we don't know exactly what context, what reason, like how we want to marry. Do we want alliances? Because we could try to get an alliance with Tuscany. We try to get an alliance. I can't really get an alliance with the Pope. The Pope is just the Pope because uh, he doesn't do diplomatic marriages like that. We could try to get an alliance with some of these other dudes. We could theoretically get an alliance with France or something. You know what I mean? It'd be tricky. Or we could look within France and get one with like Toulouse. We could get one with Barcelona. We could get one with Gascony. So there's all kinds of different things that we could do. Uh, in terms of uh, how we marry off these these family members. So, and then for the most part, uh, without going on and on, there's an intrigue tab here. There's nothing going on here yet. However, it says there's no personal scheme. You can have a hostile scheme going, and you can have a personal scheme going. That's interesting. So we saw that most everybody likes us, right? Most everybody likes us. This guy likes us. He's at 21. We could make him happier. 
So we could click on him and we can actually do a sway action. This is like a way of improving uh, our opinion with him. However, because we we have a special thing with our character, right? Because we are a family focus and because we have the, we're working on the family hierarchy, we have a special perk that says you can use the befriend scheme, befriend, befriend scheme. This makes it so that we actually become friends. It's even more powerful than just swaying them to like us. This is how you make people happy though. You just sway them essentially. You send them gifts or you sway them. We don't have enough money to bribe this guy, but we could just sway him. But instead we could actually make him a friend. So again, it's very important that the Pope, or this isn't the Pope, but this is like an appointed by the Pope kind of guy. Actually, the Pope really likes us. Holy cow, could we ask for gold? We don't have enough piety. If we had piety, we could ask for more gold. We could right click. Basically what I'm doing is I'm right clicking on these characters. And we could see how we could interest, you know, we could do all these different things. Like we could, we could have them educate our children. We can imprison them. We could try to murder them. So we have hostile schemes. We have uh, ben uh, we have positive sort of friendly schemes that, that make them like us. We have hostile schemes to just get rid of them if we need to. For the most part, we don't have to do a hostile scheme, but it's always usually a good idea to have personal schemes going. Again, there's only one personal scheme you can have going at a time. In this case, I think we might as well just try to befriend. We might as well try to befriend uh, the, the bishop guy here. Seems like a good idea. So we'll start the befriend scheme there. It said we had a 100% chance to succeed. Go to the intrigue and we see 100% chance. 10 months. Of course, there's contextual events that can happen. We'll see how that works when we unpause the game. That can make that go up or down in terms of the odds. Something devastating could happen and we might not succeed at that. We could look at internal factions. These are like revolts against us. In fact, there's even factions that can join up against our liege, right? We could, we could actually join an independence war for our own independence against the king of Italy and break off from the kingdom of Italy. This is stuff that we'll have to look forward to in the future though. Right now, I think we're happy to be under that umbrella. And then finally, the decisions. And some of these are, are long-term things that we can work for, like restoring the Holy Roman Empire or founding a holy order. Or, you know, we can commission, if we had a little bit more money, we could commission an epic. If we had more money, we could have a feast or we could call a hunt. And, um, we could do all these different things and you can imagine that calling a feast makes people happy. It, may, it lets you invite all these different people from your realm to come and, and share in, 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 in the festivities and it just makes everybody happy. It's a way to relax as well. Your character can get stressed out and it's a way to relax. Going on a hunt is also very relaxing. You can gain prestige from that, from a successful hunt. You can commission an epic that, that basically lets you sort of build a lot of prestige that way and, and uh, sort of uh, tell the story of your family and your dynasty and, and create a legacy through this, this commissioned epic. Although you can see it is expensive to do. Uh, we don't have enough money to do it yet. Yeah, you can go on pilgrimage. That also costs money though. If we click on this, it says we can click on it. It says the minimum cost is 100. So we would not be able to prepare for a pilgrimage because we don't have enough money. Convert, convert to local culture. We could become Akatane. It would cost us 300 prestige though. I don't know if we want to spend all of our prestige to do this, but we could do this. We could embrace the Akatane uh, culture. I don't know. That could be kind of neat. That would make there there'd be a lot more harmony within our country if, if the leadership and the people of the country uh, did that. And also, I don't know, Akatane might be kind of a more interesting religion or, or culture than whatever whatever we are, we're kind of we're kind of tied in between a lot of different cultural regions, right? So we kind of have the choice to do what we want there. So we could do we could do that. We could just convert because there is the 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 friction between us and the people. Uh, of the actual place that we rule. Guys, I think for the most part, we are ready to unpause. We are ready to unpause, let the game roll. Events will be happening. Things will be progressing. All those marriage requests that we sent out will be coming back. We can update our council with the new court members that we're going to be. We're going to be getting knights coming to the coming to the hall and we'll be able to recruit them into the army and better strengthen our army. We'll be able to uh, start to look and see uh, what kind of wars we can declare and get these other family members married and, and, and push towards our ambitions of, of maybe becoming the Duke of Provence, unifying the entire duchy of Provence. And that will require getting through this guy and getting through this guy. So we'll have to see how that goes and in, in, in stuff like that. So thanks everybody for watching this episode. If you guys have questions, please ask down below. I read all of the uh, comments and questions and respond to anything that I can respond to. Uh, we also, of course, play Crusader Kings many, uh, many times a week on the Twitch channel. So that's a good way to go in there and ask live questions and get actual sort of uh, explanations, uh, live explanations of, of the different things that might be uh, getting glossed over here. Uh, that's apologies if anything is being glossed over. 
we're trying to go step by step here, but hopefully this is a good foundation. These are the things that you would consider as a new player and you'd want to check out and you'd want to manage before you even unpause the game. Next episode, we'll unpause the game. So thanks everybody for being here. I will see you guys in the next one.